Hi everybody. In this video, what we're going to cover is how to work with automatic CSS and frames. For those who aren't familiar with this concept, automatic CSS is a utility framework. It allows you to write a short snippet of a utility class and in return, what you end up getting is a bunch of CSS that gets written for you. Now, there's a bunch of advantages of going this route. The biggest one is obviously you don't touch CSS. You just write utility classes. Now, you can apply some clean CSS, vanilla CSS, as you typically would if you see the need. But for the most part, you don't really have to mess with that too much. And so you write a lot less code and you get the same results in return. And not just that, you also get a lot of things that are thought out for you that you typically in, in vanilla CSS would have to fully write out. Now, the advantage of using something like frames that's developed by the same team of developers is that even with automatic CSS, you find yourself writing a lot of utility classes. With frames, you get all these utility classes put together considering typography and responsiveness and accessibility and so many other things that come into play when you're piecing all of this together and it's all done for you. And so instead of starting with a blank canvas, you literally can start out with a full blown section or a page. So Without kind of rambling on more about this, let's take a quick look at what all this looks like. This is automatic CSS. So real quick, uh, automatic CSS right here talks about the typography that it handles, the colors, spacing. There really is a lot of cool things here that are taken care of for you, where if you, you know, something like this, like grids, if you handle this with clean, you know, vanilla CSS, you know for a fact that handling grids and flex boxes and so forth, it really is a pain. So if you're able to have all this done for you and then you just need to kind of troubleshoot or handle certain areas yourself, it's much better. And here we have the cheat sheet, which is essentially the, uh, I don't know why they call it cheat sheet. I feel like that doesn't really sound like the right term for it, but this is the documentation. So you kind of need to get the hang of the syntax and uh, what it all looks like. And once you click on one of these classes, it gets copied as you just saw. Here's a quick example. So I'm filtered here to see sections. Here you would just write pad dash section dash dash L. And wherever you apply this utility class, it'll automatically do this for you. So it'll set top and bottom section padding to large. And then frames, which I should have open here. There it is. Frames is a library of all these style sheets put together for you. So you can just say, I want to have a hero section and using utility classes from here, it's all been done for you. And again, the team behind automatic CSS is the same team behind frames. So you really have people that are kind of working around the clock with this tech stack. So this is really a cool concept and a much more efficient approach to web design if you're using WordPress page builders and we at the agency use bricks. So for us, this is perfect. Let's take a look at our website and what we're going to be working on. So I have here a WordPress installation that's ready to go. We have here just a simple website. There's a homepage and nothing more. There is a link to the portal where you can kind of place your orders for a la carte SEO services that we're going to offer. And what we're going to do here is dive into the back end of WordPress, which is this is the front side of it. And we have here a post. You can't see that post here again. It is published, but we need to add a section that would show it. And what we have also, let's take a look at the plugins for a minute. We have automatic CSS and frames ready to roll. And then we have two other uh, plugins that we're not gonna deal with. With automatic CSS, let's take a look at what we get. We have here a control panel, if you will, that allows us to define a bunch of rules and settings. That way we have some guidelines in place as to what we're building. So in my case, I've defined certain line colors and uh, maybe darker colors that I want to use. That way they are applied across the board and you can see them here kind of coming to life. So we have dark slate colors defined for the text and then the buttons and all that is going to be a uh, limish color. So uh, all this is ready to roll and let's see how this all kind of comes together when we take a look at a page that we're going to work on. So this is the page we're going to add the post to. I'm going to dive into it with our bricks builder I should actually also mention, it's worth mentioning that under themes here, we have the bricks and the child theme. Let me go ahead and update this now. So we're using a child theme on purpose. That way these updates on the main theme, the parent theme, don't affect our front side and we still get the latest updates from the bricks theme. And let's dive back into our page. So 
I'm going to hit here, edit with bricks. Bricks is a page builder that we use that works with automatic CSS and frames. So in this case, here's the section that we're seeing on the front side. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this and let's say delete and under templates over here, if I click on it and I put my mouse over remote templates, you'll notice now that bricks.getframes.io is my remote templates destination. And so when I click on that, I'm going to see here essentially everything that's coming from here. And so what we're going to do here is add maybe a grid that way over here, the articles start to pop up and then we'll add also the template for the posts themselves when people click on them. So here let's search for, or here under frames, let's go to the library and let's search for, let's do article. Let's see what comes up for that. So here I already see for the particular page we're going to work on, I'm going to use probably this it looks nice and simple. And for the grid, I'll probably use article section alpha article grid alpha. Let's go with this. I don't need the button up top and the heading. We already have a navigation bar over here and we just want the post to come up under. So we'll use article grid alpha. So now we're working on the homepage. So we'll use article grid alpha. And there it is. Now when I click on this, it's you see the red background and all that it's going to ask me if I want to use the same styles that come with it. I'm going to say no, since we've already defined here some uh, limish and, and dark colors that we're working with. And there it is. So I've selected that grid section that we're working on and you can dive into it and take a look. A bunch of styles were put together for me. I didn't have to do anything here. The query, the functionality, the logic, everything is ready to roll. So we don't have to do much here at all. This is technically ready to be published. And so if I hit save and go here to the front side and hit refresh, there it is. So it's right there. There's an effect here. It looks like on hover, it kind of slides up a little bit. I can go in here and maybe bump it down if I want. So let's say all the way up here, I can say that I want to add a, actually, you know what, let's take a look as if this were, if I had no idea what I'm doing, I would go here and maybe do section or maybe padding. In this case, I know I have an idea of what I'm looking for, which is padding section. The cool thing with automatic CSS is they also give you padding that's defined for sections. So in this case, let's take a look at what padding section large would do if I apply it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit paste and I see it coming up here, padding section large, I'm going to hit apply. And now you'll see that it bumped everything down up and bottom as the documentation suggests right here, set top and bottom section padding to large. And so that's what happened. If I hit save and go to the front side and I hit refresh, now this was bumped down. And if I inspect it, I'll be able to also see the same thing happening. So let's kind of, there it is. So you can see here uh, that it was added to the bottom and to the top. And it looks like there is also some padding here on the left and on the right, which is fine. So, so if I kind of show you the responsiveness, everything is just happening automatically for me, which is great. Now say I don't want my name and the date to show for this concept. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is here's the author name. Let me actually just delete that and the post date. I don't need that either. And what I'm noticing is I'll probably, I, I should probably just get rid of the info paragraph since it's not going to be used anymore. So I can just delete that. And what else do we have here? Card footer. So nothing's really in there as well. I'm going to delete that. So here we are. So just deleting a few things and I'm going to hit save. And again, we started with a predefined library right here. We took this grid and applied it. And if I refresh within really just two minutes here, I have something that looks pretty darn good and I didn't have to do anything. Now, the last thing that we need to do here is apply some style to the actual post. So when we click here, you'll notice this is just default behavior from WordPress. We didn't design anything here. So we're going to go back and start to work on that. It should only take a minute or two. I'm going to go ahead and jump over here and I will go to templates. So this is specific to bricks, but if you're using Elementor or any other page builder, you're going to need to create a template for all the posts that come up when someone clicks, what would that post look like? So we're going to create a new template. And by the way, you see here, if I go back, this is the header template. So this is 
this template right here, the navigation and the rule behind it is that it'll appear at the moment for all pages unless someone logs into the portal and then that disappears. So I'm gonna add new and let's do blog post template and I'm gonna hit publish. That way we have something to work with and edit with bricks. The first thing we wanna do is apply some condition here. So to the template setting, I will go ahead and apply a condition that says any post type that is a post, then use the template I'm about to work on. I'm gonna hit save. The next step will be to add a frames section. So I'm gonna to go to templates again, remote templates so that I have access to bricks.getframes.io. And in this case, I'm gonna search for maybe a blog body. Uh, blog body Delta, blog body Charlie, and blog body Alpha. So let's go ahead and do, this looks a little nicer, blog body Alpha. I don't want the pre-designed colors and whatnot. And there it is. I didn't do anything here and all the utility classes are applied for me. Of course, I can go in and alter things. We still would need, so if I hit save, you're gonna notice that we don't have the title here and the, the featured image. So if I hit this post, the post looks a lot better than we saw before and everything is predefined for me and responsive. So if I go smaller, it still looks great and I can modify a lot of this, but in this case, the last thing we should probably do is add the featured image and the title. So I'm gonna go ahead again to templates, remote templates, and let's do blog, maybe blog hero. So any of these could really work. It really now is down to what we wanna do. Why don't we do in this case, instead of these, let's go ahead and build it out ourselves and see what it would take without using frames as well. So I'm gonna do this from scratch on purpose. I'm gonna go ahead and add elements. So we will add a new section and that section was added to the bottom. I will add it to the top. And in this container, essentially what we want is I'm thinking about two columns. So the title will be on the left side and then the featured image on the right. So inside this container, what I will add is, uh, let's do post title. So that's gonna be over here and let's do the featured image. So I will go ahead and uh, let's do just image. The image we need to make dynamic, I'm gonna select featured image, there it is. The first thing you're gonna notice is that I said the title would be on the left and the featured image would be on the right. So we gotta go to this container and set it to be a row. So I'm gonna go ahead and type row here. And these are utility classes from automatic CSS being suggested to me. So I'm gonna hit on flex row. And that already makes this to be in one line since it's now a row. And the next thing we would want to do is maybe center this. So we can type center and it's now again suggesting things for me. I'm on purpose doing it this way so you see uh, just the possibilities and what comes up here. Once you get the hang of it, you can just you know kind of type things out and hit enter whenever you need and it's, it's, it's even easier since your hands wouldn't leave the, the keyboard. So I'm gonna hit center all for a sec to just make this easiest, although you typically wouldn't want to just center everything like that. But there it is, featured image on the right, title on the left, and then our post body. It looks like there's a pretty big gap between the two, so maybe from one of them, we could eliminate some of that. It looks like we could take it from either or. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, on this side, click on the alpha, and let's see what they got going here with frames. So I'm gonna hit padding, none, and you'll notice that padding all of a sudden is disappearing. I'm gonna remove that for a minute, and hit save, and let's take a look at what we have here now. So there it is, we have text on the left, image on the right, and the blog post right under with everything being populated for us. So I think for now you get the idea of what it's like to work with automatic CSS in frames. I won't go deeply into perfecting all of this. Obviously we would want to add a gap between these two elements, maybe eliminate some of this or reduce at least some of the gap between these two sections. If we go to the bottom, I'm sure there's some footer, yeah, some footer stuff. So I would remove all of this as well. I would want it pretty clean. 
but you get the idea. My goal here really was to just show you how quickly you can iterate through concepts and designs if you work with something like automatic CSS in a library like Frames, which is again, just a bunch of designs put together for us with all of this in mind and all the advantages of working with utility classes and automatic CSS. So accessibility, typography, colors, spacing, everything is handled for us. That way we can just kind of get going with what we want and quickly, uh, you know, just a few touch-ups, we can perfect something so that it looks exactly like we would want. So again, the goal here is to not only use frames and automatic CSS. Sometimes you do have to go in and add some CSS uh, to get things perfected, but for the most part, you won't really have to touch CSS too much. And again, if you do work with frames as well, you should always really have a starting point that gets you a lot closer to your end goal than starting with a blank canvas. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is by hitting the thumbs up button. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.